Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds, where we are talking about IPL, talking about a game which I'm not very happy about, but Benji's very happy about, because uh, the beloved emotion that is Royal Challengers Bangalore lost to the Chennai Super Kings. But that being said, it was a good game, especially if you're a Chennai fan. So we'll go straight to the neutral, which is James, for your initial reactions to this game. I loved it. I thought it was, as a neutral fan, who because I wasn't nervous either way, it was really, really fun to watch. Um, I imagine as a fan of either team, it would have been horrible to watch because um, it was... It was an absolute road. Like it was, mm. it was a Pakistan level of road <laughs> where you just, if you're losing your wicket, it's because you've skied the ball. Um, and for RCB, even if you're skying the ball, there's no guarantee you're losing the wicket because Chennai can't catch. But yeah, I, I thought it was a very entertaining game. I'm very <laughs> interested to hear what either of you think about the um, the batting, bowling, fielding performances of your teams? Because obviously I can kind of analyse it from a neutral's perspective and say, yeah, this was interesting, but there's some, there's a bit more like emotion behind it for you yeah. guys. So it's, it's funnier to see it from my perspective. Well, so Benj. Yeah. Um, well, go on. RCB, RCB put Chennai into bat, which was the first move, which on that wicket, I thought was questionable. I mean, teams love to chase. Faf Dupacy himself loves to chase, but I still thought it was a bit questionable um, because it did look like a very good wicket. And it looked like things were going the way of RCB when Guy Quad got out very, very cheaply. But then Jinka Rahane is just doing amazing things this year and came out with just absolute surety and power and just blasted the ball everywhere he played, he played some awesome cover drives as well um devon conway also looked really good and really imperious and i sent a text to zach saying here is where after this partnership gets broken the middle order all get zeros zero zero seven zero which i expected to happen and i was pleasantly surprised by the middle order of chennai actually standing up and being counted Dubé, Raidu and Moen Ali were all striking around that 200 mark, particularly within Batty Raidu in the six balls he faced. I think he played the exact right cameo, just striking at 233, smashing it around everywhere. My only question today was around J- Jadeja, who just looked, he just looked a bit awkward when he was facing some of that batting. Um, I wonder whether it would have been better for Dhoni to go out before J- Jadeja because Joni's only been in some really good form recently, um, especially when Harshal Patel got exited from the bowling attack for bowling too many ways, high no balls. Um, I'm interested to think though, Zach, because I'm I was quite pleased with the batting performance of Chennai. What you think about the bowling performance of RCB? Because I doubt you'll be as pleased. Again, we had a good power play to say it, it was a road and at the Chinnaswamy and to say Chennai have been the best. Uh, team batting in the power play. I thought we bowled very well, especially Mohamed Siraj. Uh, well, for the first five overs, especially because Wayne Parnell shouldn't have bowled that six over in my in my opinion. We should have saved him for another over at the death. I would have liked to have seen Glenn Maxwell or uh, Hasaranga bowl that sixth over and maybe even Harshal Patel. So yeah, it, there are a few questionable decisions there. But Siraj is looking so good. Um, he's having a really good season. And it's not hard to stand out in, in Royal Challenger's bowling lineup, but I think he would, for me, he's been one of the best seam bowlers of the tournament um, so far. So, yeah, the, the Vijay Kumar Vishak in his second game, he bowled very well in his first game. The second game faced the, the full brutality of the Chinnaswamy Stadium. Um, so he's he's had a good game and a not so good game, but I'm sure he'll bounce back. Um I just think there are some questionable decisions. I think we should have bowled more spin through the middle overs, um, take the pace off the ball. Harshal Patel bowled terribly in his last over, uh, which is probably the longest over I've ever seen in the IPL, that last over of Chennai's innings. Um, so there, there are a few good things. However, my I want to take positives out of this game. 
because it's very easy to be negative when your team loses. And I think RCB's fielding for me has been awesome all tournament. Um, we don't tend to drop many catches. Uh, we when we're throwing into the into the stumps, we tend to be hitting them more often than not. I think our fielding has been been really good this tournament. Um, would you agree, James? This feels this feels like a subtle dig at the <laughs> at the at the. <laughs> Uh, the absolute state of Chennai's fielding, just yeah. on because uh, they're a all over point, forty. <laughs> just on the last point before we move on to the um, Bangalore batting innings and talking about Chennai's abysmal fielding, um, one thing I was really impressed at actually, and I think I also mentioned it to you two as well, was the running between the wickets today. Mm. Um, I think that Conway especially was pushing twos. He turned lots of ones into twos, um, and they just took a lot of ones when. Um, it didn't look like they could have and that they ran really hard and put pressure on those fielders. And I think those ones and twos, they're the sort of 1%, 2% that really make a difference. And I think it's the difference between having, um, I think it was 18 to defend in the last over today. Yeah, yeah, something. I think it was like 18 needed. Yeah, something like that. Um, it's the, the, the difference between having 18 and having... Um, like 15, 14, 13. And as soon as you get into 13, that's two boundaries and you've pretty much won. And it's, it's, it's a bit more of a mental game. Um, and, and I think those, that was really crucial today for, for, for Chennai. Yeah. yeah. I, I, on, on Zach's point about the fielding, absolutely agree. I think, um, I, I'll see potentially being the best fielders. Mm, yeah, um, sure. may, may, maybe Rajasthan competing, but, that they've been really, really up there, um, very, very on it. But it's the death bowling once again. Yeah. Um, and I agree with the bowling changes and the bowling decisions. There were some weird ones because going into this match, I would have personally, I would have played the 11 that RCB chose, um, particularly the overseas. I would have gone for Wayne Parnell over David Willey. However, I would have used them very differently because Wayne Parnell the advantage you get over David Willey is that Wayne Parnell is also a bit of a, you know, a reputed death bowler, but they used three of his overs in the power play. Yeah. Um, if you're going to try and, if you, if you want somebody to bowl up front, get swing and use them in the power play, use David Willey. That, yeah, that, that's his exactly. job. And that's something that he is actually pretty good at. Um, but the, the reason I wouldn't have played him is because you got Siraj for that. So I was quite confused by that decision. And I think, yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you've said. Um, and then moving on to RCB's batting and, you know, by default, uh, Chennai's bowling and uh, and Benji's alluded to fielding um, or lack thereof. It, it started off pretty crazy. Um, I mean, it was an absolute roller coaster the whole way, but Virat Kohli's wicket, Oh, it hurt to watch actually as a neutral because um, it was such a wet wicket. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it, it literally, it, what was it, bat inside edge onto his pad off his shoe and then just dribbled and tickled the stump and the bale fell off. It I, was... think, I think I said it's the, it's the most RCB will lose wicket I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and then, yeah, and then in the fate, same but... over... The same over, Mahipal Lomroar absolutely hoiks one into the air. Mm. Um, and I don't, I, I still now do not know how Thiek Shana managed to make it so look so difficult to catch when it was an absolute dolly inside the circle. Mm. Wasn't a good was, game for him. And he terrible. also dropped a court and bowled, I think, in the, in the same yeah, game. Yeah. So, yeah, Bench, let's talk about the field in a little bit. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on I with mean... Dad's army? There was there was two moments of good, where um, I think Amba, uh, and Jinka Rahane saved eight runs in the field. I think he saved two two good stops in the ring, which were sure fours. Um, that was about as good as Chennai's fielding got today. As, as you say, Guy Quad dropped a catch. Um, I think Shana dropped two. I mean, the first one in the first over was an absolute criminality that's like something i would drop um which you know you don't want to be likened to my catching at any time because it's notably awful um 
but then also run out of attempts. It, it, it was the um, that mix up, and I, th- I think it was Mo and Ali, and he doesn't realise that, that that they were stranded, and he throws at the wrong end. And if he had thrown mm. it straight away, then that would have been out. Donny was fuming at that when he looked at them. I think that would have uh, got Wayne Parnell out potentially as well, which would have been quite big. Um, it's disappointing, especially when in the last few years, Chen and I have actually looked for right in, in, in the field. Um, I think they are actually missing, as wild as it sounds, DJ Bravo. Because Bravo, despite being 120 years old, was excellent in the field and would always get around. Mm. And I think he would also um, he would also inspire everyone else to... Mm play well in the field as well. But don't you so, think that's why they've bowler. got Ben don't you think that's why they've got Ben Stokes though as kind of he's he's the sort of similar fielding stand up will will field I agree, long off to but long off. He's not in the side, is he? He's not in the side. He's injured. He's mm. hobbling around with a foot problem. His knee's okay, but now his foot's broken or whatever it is. Like he's he's not played for the last four or five games. You've got Sasanda Magala who's out injured. You've got Deepak Jahar who's out injured. You've got I think the list of injuries for, for CSK is is really mounting up at the minute and i think that probably plays into it a little bit like these players you know they're already playing with very limited resources whether they are tr- trying to be a bit more conservative in the field to not risk any more injuries um whether that's an option as well but yeah it, it at this level uh at international and at franchise level, I think you should always be putting in a hundred percent in the field, no matter what. Like you should be thinking about injuries later. We look at like um, Reese Topley, for example, for RCB, who I think is a big reason why RCB bowling has struggled, is because he got himself injured. Kane Williamson too. Yeah. Well, I think um, one one thing that it to uh, CSK's credit is that even though yeah, almost all of their bowlers seem to be getting injured their replacements are standing up a bit. Yeah. So uh, even though Desh Pandey didn't bowl very well today, um, he did take wickets, which is very important. And um, what, what? how do you say his name? Mathisha Pathirana. 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 Slowly. Um, the, the, the young reincarnation of Lasith Malinga, he's brilliant. Like to say he's only twenty, bowling the last over, um, d- defending it brilliantly. When he hit that Yorker, I was like, "That is flashbacks of Malinga," and the the better he gets, the the better for um, CSK, I think. And he could yeah. be a a long term like legacy player for CSK if he carries on the way he started his career. I think he was the he was the catalyst really in that. Dinesh Kartika just got out um, to Desh Pandey but we were still in the driving seat we had three overs left I think we needed 11 and over mm. um, Shabaz Ahmed um, was looking okay just hit a good six and then Pathirana got him out at the start of the 18th over and that over only went for four and that just basically swung the game in Chennai's favour and it was left to RCB's tail to finish it off and so, yeah, his his 18th over especially, that was key to Chennai winning that game. Um, it was hard to watch as an RCB fan because I was like, we just need a boundary in this over. We just didn't get it because of how well he bowled. So credit goes to him. Um, yeah. But in terms of RCB, RCB's batting, other than Mahapal uh, Lomro, who he is that hit and miss player. He's, he's there at the top of the order to provide the impetus. We're not expecting him to hit the big scores. Uh, so it's a shame that he didn't score any runs off five deliveries, kind of wasted mm. a bit there, but we expect that from him sometimes. Uh, but Faf Dupati and Glenn Maxwell, the way they played today was perfect um, in terms of putting the the innings in RCB's favour. They they took them to where they needed to be to win that game. Um, it's a shame they couldn't finish it off, but I just thought the way they played Chennai's bowlers, they knew they had to attack attack everyone and the the one dangerous bowler in Chennai's lineup in, in Ravi Jadeja they played sensibly and they just waited for the bad ball um and yeah it was just it was a a showcase of of just smashing the ball all over the place really so I was really yeah. impressed by those two um it was just a shame that that Dinesh Kartik couldn't take it to the end because he was looking very dangerous 
Yeah, I think there were some real key moments in the game today. I think it was, um, for me, the first one was Moinelli's over in the 14th. And even though he looked a bit expensive and uh, Shabazz took him for a six and then Duplessis took him for a six, um, Moe still came through and got that wicket. And I think for me, we've been talking about Moe in this, this year and saying, look, he's had a howler in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, his batting's not looked where it has been in the past. Um, and he's been dropping catches, but his bowling, I think, has really been crucial to CSK this year. And I think it's it's kept CSK in the match against Rajasthan. And it's potentially won them this game, uh, getting that crucial wicket of duplicy. I think some of the bowling changes that Donny does, just using him for that one over to be that change, um, yeah, is 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 really good. Just as we wrap up this game, I just want to say, I've just checked on Crick Info. There were four drop catches in the Chennai innings. Two Thik Shana, two Thik Shana, one Dhoni and one Guy Quad. And there was a run out chance um, mm. that was missed. So it's just, I feel like it's really hurting CSK like it did last year. Um, Mukesh Kaudry was particularly the criminal last year, whereas this year it seems to be Thik Shana. If CSK want to win this title or get into the playoffs, they're going to have to tidy up this fielding. It's it's because you, you, you look at the best teams, you look at the Gujarats, you look at the Rajasthans. Rajasthan aren't putting chances down this year. Um, but yeah, and, 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 anyway, that's my rant over. Um, I remember the last time I spoke about CSK, I went on a very long rant as well. Have we got any Cricket Nerds questions, guys? We do. Uh, I believe we do, yeah. Um, we've got one from Pal Edits who said, Hey, nerds, that's us. And you listening, if you've subscribed. Um, just to inform you that BCCI is taking care of their senior injury-prone players like Hardik Pandya and Rohit Sharma to skip a play, sorry, skip a game or to be an impact player to manage their workloads. What's your thought on it? Um, it's interesting. Mm. It's an interesting move. I don't... I, yeah, it's fine. Like, if they are injury-prone, then fair enough use the impact player but i think it's also it's a weird thing to do if the bcci as the governing body have a influence on what a franchise team like the decisions that they can tactically make yeah, yeah. that that doesn't quite sit well like if, if i translate that over to the 100 for example if the ecb forced um birmingham phoenix to sub out liam livingston every now and then because he's, you know, he might get injured. That wouldn't sit well. That would be like, mm-hmm. well, no, that's not your call. He's he's made a a contractual um, yeah. commitment to that franchise. He's getting paid a lot of money so that he can perform a certain job, and it is up to their medics and him as to whether he plays. So interesting. Yeah. Don't know what you guys think. I I, mean, I agree. I agree. Really with what you're saying. Just to offer the balanced approach on the other side of it, I think like you do see it in the hundred. Like Joe Root plays four games a year, that's it. Um you don't see yeah. like Ben Stokes has withdrawn from the hundred this year to focus on um England captaincy. Johnny Bairstow's not playing, even if he's back from injury. There's a lot of players that have decided to focus on test matches and their England responsibilities over the hundred this year. Mm. So I think it's not just the BCCI where where we see this 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 happening. Um, I think at the end of the day, what are the BCCI focused on? They're focused on the World Cup this year. That's the big thing for India now. The Border Gavaster Trophy's finished. It's the World Cup that they're hosting. They want their best eleven. Like they want to see Bumrah, but Bumrah's not going to make it to, to to the World Cup probably. But they want Hardik in that team. They want Rohit in in that team. And they don't want things like Reese Topley getting injured and probably missing the World Cup. They don't want things like Kane Williamson getting injured and probably missing the World Cup. That's two key overseas international players who've got injured in franchise tournaments and now won't re- represent their countries in the World Cup this year. Yeah. So I can see it from both sides. Um, yeah, it sucks for the franchise, but actually these governing bodies they have their priorities in, in a different place. I think it, the 
it's a bigger discussion as well because there's the players' priorities in terms of you've got some players who they want to make money and play in the IPL. You've got some players who want to play test cricket for their country and that's all they co- they'd care about. So there's, yeah, there's there's lots of, of ways of, of looking at this argument. So it's, it's a good question. Um, we've got another one from um, Amar Reddy who said, um, how flawed is the notion that the matches going to the last ball are great? Because he's Not saying pe- people keep saying last ball finishes are the best, but he disagree because the Rajasthan Royals versus Gujarat Titans match has been the match of high, of highest quality. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get it, but I think it's close matches. Close matches tend to be the most entertaining, so I don't think it's that flawed. Yeah. Uh, I I love a last ball finish, especially in T Twenty. Mm. Um, I mean, I say even more so in Test matches, actually. Yeah, when yeah. when it comes down to the wire, the everything's kind of built up to this crescendo and then if you can get a result based on the last ball that's the best yeah yeah awesome i i i, I agree i love a last ball finish i love a, a game being tense i think the um i think this game had all the makings of a thriller i think the raj dan gujarat game was really good too mm. my other thinking of like a really close game in recent history was the pakistan india game in the T20 20, 20, 20 World Cup, that was a thriller as well. And that was, I don't think it was a last ball finish, but it was like, it was, you know, it it was really engaging. Yeah. Um, the close so ones, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, um, one, one we've got, more. We've got one more. Oh, All right. Maybe ours are different. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> right. Is, is yours well, from gonna... NSN? It is from NSN. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, um. so it's linked, it linked in because uh, last last episode, obviously, Benji couldn't make it. And we made the hashtag Benji sucks. If, you've, if you'd stuck around for, you know, and um, watched the whole video. If you wow. have watched this whole video this long, then uh, leave the hashtag Coley is good. It's not very interesting, but there we go. <laughs> um, then we'll know that you've watched the whole thing. But NSN left a question. Where is Benji? Why does he suck? And seriously... Is he the Delhi Capitals of the Nerds team? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> um, he was away. Yes, he does suck. And he is the Delhi Capitals of the Nerds. What? <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you like. <laughs> make sure you comment about the fact that Benji is not Delhi Capitals. You you say what team represents each of us. That would be that would be good to know. Yeah, go on. Um, go on do that. Yeah. Make sure you share this. We're, we're <laughs> trying to get to two and a half thousand subscribers as soon as possible. So make sure you do that. Check out all our, our social medias. The link tree is in the description. Um, you can follow us uh, on your podcasting sites that you like to listen to. So you can listen to us as well if you're driving or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been great <sighs> to talk to you about cricket. We're going to do it much more. So keep tuning in and we'll see you later.